Hello, this is Andrew Osio from Expression College for Digital Arts, and here's another demonstration into visual effects. Um, and here's something that you can use that is maybe not so much a visual effect, but just plain animation, uh, using a hair system and dynamic curves. Now, hair, the dynamic hair system in Maya is quite complex, and it's uh, extremely powerful, but you can use it in a much more simpler way to create some very simple animations that are easy to do. Uh, I'm going to draw a curve. curve tab and I'm just going to draw a curve and there's lots of ways you could do it um, this demonstration requires a curve with um, edit points that are fairly evenly spaced um, it works better that way a lot of uh, simulations simply work better when you've got uniform geometry so let's just make a curve and uh, actually make a couple of curves four or five different curves. And curves are an amazing construction medium and so if I can make these dynamic and animate them I can produce a model on top of them that's also dynamic. And to do that we want to just go to the main hair menu. And there are two ways to kind of make um, curves dynamic. Uh, one is to actually just select the uh, make curves dynamic menu, make select the curves dynamic, or another is just to assign a hair system. And I kind of like this option better, especially for this mode. The only real difference between the two is that they ha the presets for the uh, dynamic curves are slightly different. And uh, assigning the hair kind of gives a more natural look to it. But as you can see, if I make the selective curves dynamic, the same thing happens. Basically, the output curves uh, the curves are put into an output group and then we have a hair system which is a sort of a, a group or global node and then we have an individual follicle for every different curve and these are the ones that respond to dynamics and uh, there's a group uh, node here that can uh, handle group issues or uh, global issues and then the original curves are there. So I'm just actually going to undo this and go back and uh, we're just going to actually assign a, a hair system like this. So new hair system. As you can see, pretty much the same thing happens in the outliner, but the stiffness fall off and other parameters of the actual hair is slightly different. So all we need to do to kind of get these uh, curves going and moving is uh, we just need to add some dynamic fields. To add a field to a group of uh, dynamic curves, all you got to do is select the global field and, uh, and then add a field to that uh, global hair system node. So we're going to go hair system and choose a volume axis field, which are really great, especially if you want to produce kind of a force with a little bit of turbulence. Now the volume axis field is... Um, by default, it's more and more like an explosion where you can see the arrows push force out. But we're going to change a little of that. We're going to set the away from center and axis to zero. And we're going to turn on directional speed instead, which will make it one. So as you can see, by default, it pushes it in the x direction. Now, the volume axis field is great for many things. One of the reasons it's great is that it's very visual. So if I use the transform node and move it around you can see that it's actually going to be pushing these curves in an upward motion and that's great for a wind to have a little updraft so you can catch the bottom of an object and kind of push it up so I usually put that into any animation and in addition to that we might want to have just a tiny bit of turbulence uh, volume axis fields also have built-in turbulence which makes them quite powerful and sometimes depending on your effect it actually works better than the standard turbulence field so we're just going to do like a 0.2 turbulence and uh, turbulence frequency we're going to increase. That's going to make the turbulence noise a little finer, a little more natural. And uh, then we're going to set our animation to a decent number and give it a playback. And there we go. We kind of got little curves blowing in the wind and just a little turbulence to kind of make them blow 
a little unpredictable. You can even increase that turbulence a little. Uh, not too much. Uh, turbulence of uh, full on one is pretty dramatic, and uh, I don't think you'd want more. So now that these curves are dynamic and they're moving in animation, what can we do with them? Well, they're still curves. So if you're familiar with surface modeling techniques, we could just actually do a shift select on them. It's one at a time. And we can go to our surface modeling tools and actually make what we call a NURB uh, loft. So we just go to loft. run that back and then when we run the animation the NURB surface is going to respond to the curves and so you get a nice turbulent curtain moving back and forth and it's a little more controllable because if you want to do certain things like change the nature of a particular curve then you could stiffen it at certain points have a nice lot of control it's a nice simple way Definitely, since the advent of end cloth, there are other ways to do it, but this is a nice, simple way to do it that maybe a few people don't know about. Uh, other things that we can do with curves, of course, is we can extrude uh, polygon geometry. So I'm going to just do that really fast. Let's do a object here, and I'm just going to pull it all the way up to the top. Uh, this is a great way to kind of uh, make a hair system where you've actually modeled your hair as opposed to doing a dynamic fur system or a paint effect system. Let's just take that cube and we're going to do a trick that we may have seen in other videos where we're going to extrude the polygon. So we're going to select curve, shift select the object, go to face mode, and then shift select the face I want to extrude. Back to my polygon tools, edit mesh, extrude. <coughs> and while I still have that extrude up, I'm going to add some more divisions, lots more, and I'm going to taper it down a little so it looks a little thinner on the edges. Now, because the extrude <coughs> obeys the curve and the curve is dynamic, so is the extrude. It's a dynamic extrude, so it's a dynamic model. So it's a really easy way to create geometry that is animated in a natural way.